Hello YouTube! Today in the Naughty Librarian I'm doing another book unhaul. I feel like I say this all the time in my unhauls, but realistically speaking, uh, I have a lot of bookish friends who live near me, so oftentimes I get books for free from them, or I get them for very cheap, or sometimes I do buy a full price book and I read it and I don't like it, so it's gotta leave my shelf. I'm gonna get rid of Mirage by Samaya Dowd. Uh, I wanted to love this book. I did read it. I did go to a signing for this book. It's signed and I read it and I didn't love it. Like I wanted to. It's Moroccan inspired, which is really cool because I don't really have another book that's Moroccan inspired, I think. And also the cover. Oh, the cover is gorgeous. But I really don't have any interest in continuing on with the series. I thought this was ultimately just kind of okay. I didn't love it. So as much as it's gorgeous and I want this pretty book on my shelf, it's not really serving a purpose on my shelf besides being pretty, you know? It doesn't have it doesn't have a lot in between the pages that I was obsessed with, so it's gonna go. Maybe someone else will find it and love it. I'm also getting rid of this copy of The Young Elites by Marie Lu, mainly because I had an extra copy of it. I have another copy that is signed to me and this one is not signed. I think I got it at a library book sale just so I could meet Marie Lou again. She has a lot of signings. Get it signed, do a giveaway maybe. I think that's why I picked it up but uh, it's just an extra copy of a book I already own. I don't need it on my shelf so <laughs> I'm just gonna get rid of it. I don't think I invested a lot of money here but yeah it's just a, it's just a duplicate. However I really do like this book series. It's really really good. It, I recommend. It's from the perspective of the villain. It's excellent. Please read it, it's excellent, but um, yeah, I don't need two copies. Also leaving my shelf is Unhooked by Lisa Maxwell. This is a kind of Peter Pan retelling. I think it's about Captain Hook in particular. And I, I haven't really heard any good reviews about it in general. And also I got it because I was like, oh, Peter Pan retelling. I haven't seen a lot of those. That should be interesting. And then it sat on my shelf for like two, three years now. I still haven't read it. I doubt it's gonna happen. I just, I, I don't have high hopes of it impressing me. You know what that's like? You know, you have high hopes that maybe you'll like it, but they're not really that high because you're like, I know I'm not gonna like it. <laughs> so that's why it's leaving my shelf. I don't see myself picking it up anytime soon. I think the window for me picking this up has closed, so it's leaving. I'm gonna get rid of Dumplin' by Julie Murphy, and I bought this hoping I was gonna love it, and I thought it was ultimately just okay. Frankly, I thought the Netflix movie was better that's saying something here, but uh, it's not bad, it's just not great. And the only reason I kept this for as long as I did is because it's signed, but ultimately I did not enjoy it that much. I thought it was just okay. And I was gonna keep it just because it was signed, but like, it's just okay. It's not like, you know, sparking joy to quote Marie Kondo, so I'm gonna get rid of it. Also leaving my shelf is Seafire and its sequel, Steel Tide, both by Natalie C. Parker. And uh, don't get me wrong, like I liked Seafire. I thought it was a cool uh, all-girl pirate crew adventure. So if you're into pirates and female pirates in particular, you might really like it. I didn't think it was poorly written at all. I just, I, like, I have the sequel and I don't see myself reading it, honestly. Like, it was okay. I think I ended up giving it like 3.5 to 4 stars. It's not a bad book, it's just I've lost interest in it, which is sad because, I mean, the cover is gorgeous and it's female pirates, which sounds super cool, but I just don't really see myself continuing on with the series, even though it's not a bad series. So I do recommend picking it up, but for me, I think it's time for it to leave my shelf. I'm gonna get rid of The Murder Complex by Lindsay Cummings. I bought this randomly at a book signing that Lindsay Cummings was at because I'm like, Murder Complex, cool title. And then I got it signed and it sat on my shelf for like two to three years now and I still haven't read it. And I'm frankly, I've kind of lost interest in reading it. I don't have high hopes. I think it's about like, um, like um, assassins somehow but it's like teen assassins that I don't know. I'm just not vibing with it anymore. I mean, it's got a dope title. It's got a dope cover. I just don't see myself picking it up. The window is passed, you know what I mean? Like you have that window where you want to read it and the window's closed now and I'm just like, I'm over it. I'm also going to get rid of Blood Rose Rebellion by Rosalind Eves. I, I think I got this from a friend who was getting rid of it and I was like, oh, that's pretty cover. And then it's just been sitting on my shelf and I don't really foresee myself 
ever bumping this up on my TBR list, like something I desperately need to read right now. There's just a lot of other books out there that I want to read more than this one, and I don't see myself getting to it anytime soon. I just don't see it on my radar anymore, and I got it for free, so it's not like I'm losing anything here. I just, I'm just not going to read it. Like, I just, I know I'm not, I've come to terms with that. <laughs> I've come to terms with my, like, lousy ability to gauge which books I'm going to run read, because I want to read all books. And then I get all the books and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> so yeah, it's just, it's just going. You know, this one's kind of, I'm on the fence about, honestly. This is Magic for Liars by Sarah Gailey. And I got this because I went to a book signing with a friend of mine and they really liked the book. So I decided to get it. And I mean, it, it's definitely a really cool concept. It's basically Harry Potter noir. So think about that. Like if, if Harry Potter was a noir detective story, that sounds awesome, frankly. The problem is me personally, I always think I like noir and then I read it and I realize every time, oh no, I don't like noir. <laughs> I, I constantly fool myself. I think this is gonna be the noir story I like and I never like them. So while this isn't bad, I think I'm just not the right reader for it. Like. I don't have anything against this book personally. It's just not my personal taste, but I think it's good in general. So I don't know. I'm still on the fence about keeping it, but frankly, I read it and I did not like it as much as I wanted to like it. So it's like, why am I keeping it? I'm also going to get rid of this whole series by Mary E. Pearson. I forget the name of the series, but it's a kiss of deception, uh, beauty of darkness, that's book three. <laughs> and then the second book is Heart of Betrayal. I have the whole series mainly because uh, I have a friend of mine liked it, but I, so I bought the other two books. I'm like, maybe they get better. And then I, I, I didn't really like book one a lot. I thought for the first half of the book, it was very bad. And then the second half of the book, it got kind of good. Like genuinely book one, um, Kiss of Deception ended well. It doesn't start well, but it ends kind of really good. So I don't know. I have these books on my shelf. I met the author. They're signed. It's just I didn't like book one enough to really want to continue on with the series. So I'm like, why do I have the series besides peer pressure? <laughs> so yeah, I think um, I'm just I'm just going to let them go. I, I'm moving on. A couple more books I'm going to get rid of are The Wedding Date and The Wedding Party, both by Jasmine Guillory. These ones I'm also a little on the fence about because <sighs> these are books I wanted to like more than I actually liked. Like they're, they're made out of things I would normally like in a rom-com, but in particular The Wedding Date I feel like is genuinely very overhyped. It was very like all over the place when it first came out and I read it. And I was like, well, it was all right. Like it wasn't great. And then I went to the wedding party thinking, well, maybe, you know, the author has come along, it's gonna be better. And I, I found the writing still very similar, not much better. Like it was like a little better, but not by much. And these are books I just, I want to like more than I do. Like I've read other books that are similar to these that I liked a whole lot more. So. Do I keep them on my shelf because I want them on my shelf or do I get rid of them because I just didn't like them as much as I wanted? And I think realistically, if I didn't like them that much, they should probably go. I am gonna get rid of this copy of Little Brother by Cora Doctoro. It seems kind of cool. It's like a cyberpunk comedy type, you know, sci-fi adventure story. And it could be really cool, but the other side of the coin is I have two copies. <laughs> so it's like, do I need two copies of a book I haven't read yet? The answer is no. I'm going to keep my hardcover copy and get rid of the softcover copy because why do I have two? <laughs> so I do still kind of want to read this. It's just uh, I don't need two copies of it. Like, why do I have two copies? I'm getting rid of The Way We Fall by Megan Crew. I think I got this at a library book sale randomly just because the cover was cool. So it's kind of a cover buy. And it, I think it's more, <laughs> this might not be the best year to be reading it because it's kind of about like a pandemic that starts with a fever and a tickle in your throat. And I'm like, ooh, this is 2020 is not the year for this book. <laughs> 2020 is not the year to be reading any books about pandemics. And I mean, it could be good, no hate to it. It's just like, I don't think I'm going to read it. I'm going to part ways with the program by Suzanne Young. Again, I think I got this at a library book sale, I'm pretty sure. And then I met the author and it is signed, but uh, it was just kind of a book I found accidentally. 
and then I happened to meet the author, so I got it signed. But uh, I, I, the window's closed on this one. It's it's teens, and I think what is it like? Oh, uh, suicide is now an international epidemic. So you're basically they're like, oh, people are committing suicide too much. No one's allowed to feel anymore. And then like if you start feeling, they put you in a mental hospital. So. <laughs> I mean, the premise could be okay, but I don't think it's a premise that would be happening now. It definitely feels like this came out a few years ago. And I don't know, the window on my interest in this book has closed, but I, it could be good. I've heard good things about it. It's just, I, I just don't feel like I'm going to read it anymore. I'm gonna get rid of this copy of This Shattered World by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner. And don't get me wrong, I actually love this book. I love this series. It's excellent i love it so much uh this is the starbound series and this is actually book two of it just for some reason i have two copies i don't know why i have two copies of book two but i do and this is genuinely really good i love this series so i hope someone finds it and reads it it's really good <laughs> i just i don't know why i have two copies of book two I don't really know why I have I'm So Glad You're Here by Pamela Gay. Well, I do know why I have it. I was sent it for promo. Oh, here's a promo card actually. But uh, I got sent it for promo and I thought it was a different book than it was. I thought this was fiction, but it's actually a memoir. And I am so selective with memoirs. I'm not really into them in general. Like I'm not just, a, I'm just not a memoir kind of girl. So if I'm going to read a memoir, it has to be one I specifically want. And this one, I, I'm just not so into. So I'm going to get rid of it and maybe someone will find it and actually really enjoy it. I'm getting rid of Every Day by David Levithan because I, I just, I'm never going to read this. I got it because I know they made a movie out of this and David Levithan was doing a signing and I love David Levithan in general. I've read other books and so I got this signed and it was weird because it was a signing for when like um the movie was coming out and like the the uh, like the girl who was in the movie signed the book too because she was at the signing I'm like why are you signing the book like <laughs> that was really weird so I have it signed by this random like the the main actress from the movie and I'm like why did you sign my book I didn't want you to but anyway I have it signed and I don't think I'm actually going to read it but it is a cool concept and David Levithan is a cool person so it's, it's just going. I'm not going to read it. I'm going to get rid of Ink Heart by Cornelia Funke. And I, I don't know if that's how you say it. I'm assuming it's Funke, but I am also going off pronunciations based off of uh, Arrested Development. So I could be wrong. Please correct me in comments. <laughs> but, um, Ink Heart, I found it at a library book sale a few years ago. I know it's a popular series. There is a book made out of it. And I was like, oh, I should read that series. It's very popular. And it's just been sitting on my shelf being unread and honestly I don't think I'm ever going to read it I don't really have a lot of interest in it I just got it for the sake of that it was popular <laughs> again another book I got a library book sale just because it's popular uh the books of ember this is actually an omnibus so it's the three books of the series so it has city of ember the people of sparks and the prophet of yonwood and I think yeah so this is the first three books of that series all in one mashup which I thought was a deal. So like, ooh, three books for the price of one, sold. And I know they made a movie out of the books of Ember, but uh, I, I didn't see the movie and I have no interest in the book really. I, I just got it because it was popular at a library book sale and they got it for like a dollar. It's not happening, I'm not gonna read it. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get rid of this one. It's Dangerous Alliance by Jenniki Cohen. Uh, two of my friends have read this book and both hated it and both these friends have very different reading styles and they both hated it. So I'm like, oh, there's a common denominator here and it's this book. <laughs> and part of me just wants to see like, how bad is it? But I'm like, do I want to read a book just because I think it's bad? And the answer is no. I like going into books thinking they're going to be good. And this one I've heard, I trust my friend's judgment because both friends are opposite ends of the spectrum in their reading taste and they both didn't like it. So. It's not appealing to anybody. <laughs> I'm just like, eh, I got it. My friend gave it to me because they didn't like it. And I was like, well, okay, I'll have it. And then I'm like, I don't care how pretty the cover is. I'm just, I'm just not into it. I'm not going to read it. I'm not risking it, basically. I don't think I'm going to like it. Why, why bother with it? I really don't have a lot of interest in reading Daughter of the Burning City by Amanda Foodie. I, j I think I got it for free. Like, my friend was getting rid of it, so I snagged it and, um... For a while, I did have interest in this. When it first came out, like I was 
it was on my radar. I was interested in it, but I never picked it up. And now, like I was saying for other books, the window's just closed. Like I, it's been too long and I'm no longer interested in it. I mean, it could be really, really cool. It has like a circus theme. And I think uh, this girl creates like creations and then they, they're fake and then they, they end up dying for real somehow. I don't know. It has really cool fantasy circus like magical elements that seem cool. But uh, it's been this long and I, and I just I don't ever see myself picking it up. It's been too long and I'm not interested anymore as much as I used to be. I'm finally going to get rid of this series, uh, which is Zenith and its sequel, Nexus. I think this was supposed to be a trilogy, but Zenith did poorly, so they made it into a duology. And I have not read Nexus. Um, I don't really have a high hopes for wanting to read Nexus, although I did read Zenith, and this one was very maligned on booktube all over the place. Like, I honestly felt a little bad for the authors, how, how mean people got about it, because I read it. And honestly, I didn't think it was that bad. Like, I thought it was pretty okay. There's a lot of really, really great imagery here that I thought was cool and um, some really dark concepts and some twists. And a lot of it I thought was really cool. You know, sci-fi stuff can just be cool for the sake of being cool. It doesn't always have to be like some deep meaning. But on the other hand, do I also see the criticisms as being valid? Yeah, like some of the criticism is valid. I mean, it is kind of all over the place. It doesn't always make sense. Some of the dialogue is it's just terrible. But like it does have some cool stuff in it. There is potential here for it to be kind of cool. So yeah, I don't hate this book. Everyone hated it except for me apparently. I thought it was all right. And then uh, it's just been so long that I, I don't remember enough of what happened in Zenith to want to read Nexus. I just don't remember enough and I, I, I've kind of given up on the series. I mean, I don't want to hate it because I didn't hate it, but like, ooh, did people hate this book? Mm -mm. I just don't think I'll like Things You Save in a Fire by Catherine Center. I got it uh, as a book of the month and I just, I don't see myself reading it because I, I did look it up. I looked at other reviews kind of to get a better idea what this book is about and it just does not seem like something I am going to like. And you know what? I haven't read the book, so I don't know I don't like it. It's just from the, all the research I've done, I don't think I'm gonna like this. And I just don't wanna read a book I'm not gonna like. So I'm just gonna pass it on to someone in the future who will find this and really enjoy it. I'm getting rid of these two books by Lisa Kleppis, which is Cold Hearted Rake and Marrying Winterborn. This is book one and two of this uh, Ravenel series, I believe. And, uh, <sighs> I read Cold Hearted Rake and uh, I didn't like it, honestly. Uh, I know everyone really, really likes Lisa Kleppis and I'm not saying the books are poorly written. The books are obviously well crafted. I think she's a good author. It's just her books aren't necessarily my taste. So nothing against them. I don't think they're bad. It's just I don't like them in particular. And it's mainly because her dudes are garbage people. Like I hate the male leads in these they are terrible people this one i know for a fact i didn't like the lead i i just i didn't get the romance i did not like it uh, this is book two which is based off a character we met in book one and people are trying to convince me that you're gonna like this male lead by the end of this book but frankly fuck that guy like i hate him he is a legit fucking predator in this book to the point where I'm like, why are we trying to forgive him? He is a prick and I hate him. Fuck that guy. <laughs> I don't want to read a whole book about him and try to humanize this asshole. Fuck him. So I'm just not going to read it because I feel like I will just be infuriated the whole time. But you know what? I also have the unpopular opinion here. A lot of people really like these books. So it might just be a me thing, but I didn't really, I don't care to read this one because I read this one and didn't like it. So who knows? Last book I am getting rid of is Lady Claire is All That by Maya Rodell. I just recently read this one and I gave it like three stars. Like it was fine, it was cute, but ultimately I read it and I don't love it. I thought it was okay. So why am I keeping a book on my shelf that I read and I just thought was okay? Like it's not sparking joy, so to speak. So I'm just gonna get rid of it because I've read it and I didn't love it. So I'm gonna get rid of it so on my shelf I can put a new book that I might really love. I'm just getting rid of stuff that I know I don't love, which is like excellent. It leaves more space for things I, to put on my shelves in the future. 
All right, so that was like a whole boatload of books that I've just recently decided they got to go. And of course, I've already got new books. My shelves are constantly over full because even if I get rid of a bunch of books, I have now bought a bunch of books to refill those shelves space. So um, I'm just constantly trying to juggle books. <laughs> but um, I don't know, let me know in the comments. Uh, you can try to make a case for any of these books if you wish, but I think I'm pretty determined that these are leaving my shelves. It'll be highly unlikely a book is gonna make it back to my shelf, but you can try to plead your case if you like. Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you want to see more videos, make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye!